In this tutorial, we learn about scene management in Xenco Game Studio. When you create a new project, the first scene that is loaded inside the scene editor is called the main scene. To the left, we have the scene hierarchy, and on top of the hierarchy, we have a couple of options. This first icon, which is a big white plus, creates a new entity for us and adds it to the scene. We then have a search box which allows us to type in a word and then it displays all the entities that match its name. We then have the options to either expand all the items in our scene and then also that collapses all the entities in our scene. We can close a scene by clicking on the close icon in the main scene tab. And if we want to open it again, we simply click on the scene item inside the asset view. The levels of your game are built up out of scenes. And the most important scene that you have is called the root scene. In this case, it is the main scene that we have opened right here. Now it is possible that your level exists out of only one scene. But as soon as you have a very large level, you want to divide your scene into multiple subsegments called child scenes. Each child scene can also again have another child scene. Therefore, it's often recommended that the root scene only contains player logic and various lighting elements like a directional light. So why do we have different scenes in one level in the first place? You can load and unload scenes inside the scene editor. And when we do this, we actually improve the performance of the editor. And we remove the amount of clutter you see inside the editor, making it easier for you to focus on the level part that you want to design. Another reason to use scenes and child scenes is because scenes are stored in a different folder. This means that if you have a team working on the same scene, you can actually divide your team inside these child scenes without them interfering with one another. In the end, when everyone has created their own scene, a level designer can add all these sub-scenes together in the main root scene. We can add a child scene to our current scene by going to the asset view, looking up a different scene that we want to load in, clicking it, holding it, and either dragging it inside the scene editor window or the scene editor hierarchy. This particular scene was now added as a child of the main scene. The main scene is also the active scene where we add new entities to. That means if I click on the Create New Entity button, and I for instance create a new entity, then this is automatically a child of the main scene. If I want to change the active scene, I can right click on a different scene, a child scene, and clicking on the Set as Active Scene option. If I add an entity now, it gets added to this child scene of ours. As soon as we select it, a transform gizmo appears and we can start moving our scene around. We can also change the offset right here in the property grid. This offset can also be called via code using the offset property. If we want to view all the entities or hide all the entities of a child scene and its sub child scenes we can click on the load and unload all entities button right next to the name of our scene this hides the scene entirely clicking on this option again shows the entire child scene again right next to that option we also have the lock and unlock all entities if we click on this lock option whilst we have selected a child scene, then this will lock all the entities of said scene. Even if we select an entity of this scene, we can no longer transform our object around using the transformation gizmos. We do, however, are still able to change its properties by manually typing in the values inside the transform gizmo. Note that the locking of entities happens for all its child entities when you click on a scene entity. If we do this, for instance, for an entity in our scene, for instance, this camera target, and we click on this lock icon, 
Notice how the lock only applies to the entity that we have selected and not its child entities. If we want to lock all child entities recursively, we have to hold down the control key as well. Now, as you can see, we've also locked its child entity, in this case, a camera. A parent scene doesn't know anything about a child scene that it might have. Instead, a child scene can have a reference to a parent scene. This is especially useful when you start loading in your child scenes via code. Even more important, when a scene is loaded at runtime, only the root scene itself is loaded, but not its children. This is done via code. In a later tutorial, we'll learn how to do this by code and how we can even achieve scene streaming. Last but not least, we also have the scene that is loaded when your game first starts. We set this by going to the assets and looking for the game settings. Then the very first property here is the default scene that is loaded when your game starts. The first option is to select the scene and it will display all the scene times that you have in your asset folder. We can remove the default scene that we have by clicking on the clear reference button and we also have the select the reference asset button which highlights the scene in our asset view.